Hey, how's it going? Mitchell here of MitchellKPhotos.com. Today, I'll talk about where the eyes of your photographic subjects should be looking. Seems like a small nuance, right? So does it even matter? Yes, it does very much. And when you understand why, hopefully by the end of this video, you will get more consistent at creating stronger, better photos that evoke emotions and tell stories. So why does it matter whether your subject's eyes are looking towards the camera, above, to the side, or somewhere else in the frame? It matters because of visual weight. A visual weight, I'd say, is a more fluid way of looking at composition. More fluid than some of the rigid rules and formulas that exist. It's based on the idea that some elements within the frame are going to draw more attention, they're gonna be more noticeable than others. Hence, they are more visually heavy. There is actually so, so much to say about visual weight and I've written about it, I have talked about it in my courses. But what's important for our purposes here is this. Here we have a photo of a person. We can make out his face. In cases like this, the face becomes visually heavy almost every time. Our gaze gravitates towards the face. But even more than the face, we're drawn towards the eyes. When the eyes are clearly visible, they are generally the most visually heavy element in a photograph. So, despite all this other stuff in the frame, our eyes go towards his eyes. Another example to expand on the point. A lot happening here. And then there's only this one eye showing. What are you almost immediately drawn to? I think most of us would say the eye. Of course, there's some subjectivity here, but for most part, you will keep coming back to the eye. Is it starting to make a bit more sense now? The eyes in our photographs draw so much attention to themselves, so can you kind of see the photographic potential in that? Here's a close-up portrait. His eyes are looking directly into the lens. They become incredibly visually heavy. You could even say that it's hard not to keep coming back to his eyes. The eyes looking into the camera affect you when you view the photo. It can feel like they're looking back at you. When the eyes in the photo look back at your eyes, there is a certain intensity to the image, even if the subject is smiling like here. In other cases, this intensity can become somewhat confronting, like in this photo. The man's eyes are just piercing. Eyes looking into the camera can signal confidence and strength. Imagine if this wrestler was looking down or sideways. The effect would be completely different. You'd feel completely different looking at the photo. So this is important. Where the eyes of a person in a photo look can definitely make us feel a certain way about that photo. What about if the eyes of the subject look across the frame or even outside it? Without eye contact, the feel is usually not as intense and definitely not confronting in the manner that I just mentioned before. Quick comparison. This man here is looking at us. The gaze feels pretty intense. Here, a very similar shot, but he's looking off camera. The result is that the feel is much less intense and there's definitely nothing confronting about it. We also get the sense here that the shot is candid. There's no hint that any of these men were even aware of me photographing. It's common to get this impression and feel as soon as the eyes of the subjects look off camera. Sometimes even a fairly close up frame feels candid just because the eyes don't look into the lens. There's something else in all of this too. Our gaze or the audience's gaze generally follows the gaze of the subject. It doesn't matter where they're looking. Their eyes guide our eyes, or at the very least, influence where we will look. The eyes of the subject drawing our attention and guiding our gaze is a big, big deal. Why? Because in photography, this is essentially what storytelling is all about. We draw the viewer's eyes towards a certain element and then we guide their eyes towards other elements within the frame to tell our story. 
If the subject looks outside the frame, our eyes often follow towards the edge of the frame. We wonder, what are they looking at? What is outside? Or in this case, what seems to have surprised these men so much? With both photos you've just seen, our eyes are drawn towards the eyes of the subjects. Then they're guided to the edges of the frame and a sense of story is born. In this photo, it's clear that everybody is watching something. The people's expressions are those of spectators. We don't necessarily look away from them, but mentally, we do go outside the frame. We imagine a story that's taking place there. The sense of story can get even stronger if the subject looks at someone or something within the frame. When the subject looks at an element within the frame, that element gains a purpose in a sense. If this string of wool was somewhere in the frame and the man wasn't looking at it, we'd probably not even notice it. But he is looking at the wool, so it gains a purpose within the story. It inevitably draws our attention. It becomes visually heavy as a result. A similar thing happens here. The man looks down at the book in which he's writing. We're drawn to the book. It also becomes visually heavy. But there's something else here too. The boy's eyes are looking at the man. So now there's this link between everything. There's this path that our gaze follows and it kind of loops. The gaze goes from the man to the book, to the boy, then back to the man. Once people start looking at each other and interacting with their eyes, that's when even more potential for storytelling is born. We can start imagining the relationships between the characters, what they're talking about, what they're thinking, and things of that nature. There are, of course, plenty of nuances in where your subject's eyes could be looking. If there are more people in the frame, they could be looking in different directions. This means that the potential in the story and the feel of a photo is virtually limitless. To leverage this potential, you just need to keep the things that I've been talking about in mind. So now you know why it's important where the eyes of the people in your photos are looking. Be conscious of this the next time that you're out shooting. You'll have a much higher chance to create the kinds of photos that won't leave your audiences indifferent. And those are the kinds of photos that we always strive towards. They're much stronger and much better than those that don't. If you found this video useful, do check out my course. Uh, a little plug here. It's called Behind the Scenes Travel Photographer of the Year Winning Portfolio. Long title, yes, but it's a very long and thorough course. In it, I talk about topics like these, visual weight, where the eyes of the subject should be looking, but these are really only a couple of pieces to the puzzle to creating great photos. This educational resource is the closest thing to a blueprint to creating great photos. Photos that are publication or even award worthy. That's it for me. Please subscribe, like, share. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time.